This year, many of our teachers are using a grading system we call proficiency-based grading. With this grading system, teachers and students are able to prioritize skill development instead of point accumulation. Teachers will all use the same formula to calculate end-of-course letter grades. Students will still earn a letter grade on their report cards. Schools still calculate GPAs for transcripts. The proficiency grading system is designed to give parents more information about the progress of their child and better prepare students for high school and beyond. In a traditional grading system, students often chase points. 55 points for this homework assignment, 25 points for this lab assignment, 100 points for this test, 10 points of extra credit. All those points get added together for a final percentage, which is translated into an A, B, C, D, or F grade. This makes it really hard for students and parents to know what skills need attention. Let's dig into this. A high school class may have eight skills students are supposed to learn. Let's pretend these eight boxes each represent a skill taught in a class. The red pixels show how much of each skill a student cannot do. The blue shows how much they can do. This would be an A. A student and parent should feel pretty good about this as a grade. In each of these eight skills, the student understands and is able to perform at a little over 92%. This is also an A. That's probably okay. It's about 90% understanding. The difference here is that the student obviously struggles with one specific concept over the others. But let's move on to another example. This is a C. It shows the student knows most of the concepts. This is often what we think of when we see the grade letter C. The problem is, this is also a C. This is a little more alarming. There are some obvious gaps in the knowledge here. When this is all combined into a pile of points, students and parents don't know where the gap is. The truth is, in a traditional point-based system, most of the time Bs and Cs just show that a student knows most of the concepts. Proficiency-based grading seeks to improve that communication. Students will still get a final letter grade, but students will be given scores specific to the skills they are expected to learn. The proficiency grading system is designed to provide improved consistency with how teachers calculate letter grades at the end of a course. In a traditional grading system, different classes often have different formulas for calculating grades. In one class, tests may count for 20%, quizzes for 20%, homework for 50%, class participation for 10%. In another class, tests and quizzes may be a total of 60%, homework 35, and participation 5%. Teachers using our proficiency-based grading system will all use the same formula to calculate end-of-course letter grades. All of our skills will be reported on a four-point scale. Students earn an A by getting a score of three or four in all skills for the course. The ratio of twos and threes determines if the grade is a B or C. So let's go through that another way. This is an A, the student has a 3 or 4 in all skills. This is also an A. The student has a 3 or 4 in all skills here as well. This is a B. The student has some 2s, but at least half of skills are at a level 3 or 4. This is a C. The student has a majority of 2s with some 3s and or 4s. If a student cannot score a 3 on any of the skills expected for a class, this is a D. All 2s. If a student has any ones, they don't get credit for the class. It's either a failing grade or an incomplete. But the system does allow teachers, parents, and students to identify exactly which skill they scored a one on, which means they know better what they need to do to improve. The proficiency grading system is designed to measure what students know as a result of learning in the class. In a traditional school environment, if a student learned a skill by the end of a semester but didn't test very well early on, their grade suffers because of those early tests or assignments. In a proficiency-based grading system, students who don't understand a concept early on but master the concept by the end of the course are given full credit. We don't think students should be punished for learning in our schools. We should be celebrating that learning. 
An analogy sometimes used is that we award a gold medal to a track athlete based on their event time in the Olympics, not on the average of their previous time. Sometimes this means students will be able to reassess if they score poorly early on in the year. This usually doesn't mean they are taking the same test again. It's more likely that when the students scored poorly on something, the teacher helped them determine what steps they can go through to improve their understanding. Then, when the student shows they have gone back to learn more, they are given the opportunity to show that learning in a new way. This type of grade has been awarded to our students by colleges for many years through our Advanced Placement, or AP courses. Students who take an AP exam and earn a high enough score are given college credit at all Illinois universities and at the majority of colleges and universities throughout the country. A student who struggled at the beginning of an AP course but improves and scores a 5 on that final exam is given the same college credit as the student who excelled initially and scores a 5. The college only takes into consideration what the student can show they have learned by the end of the course and disregards the pace a student needed to achieve that learning. We're excited for the new proficiency system that will provide more information to parents, consistency in grading, and better measures what students have learned. Please talk to a leader or teacher in your school if you have more questions.